love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for my uh, first installment here of many in 2024 on Aduro Clean Technologies. We've just uh, been made privy to an interview with the CEO, Mr. Ofer Vikas. Uh, the interview I will share with you in the description below, as well as in the comments section for you to link over and catch that 20 minutes. It will be 20 minutes well spent. There were a number of different uh, nuggets within that interview, and it is a must watch for anybody who's interested in the story uh, for existing and would be share owners in the company. It is a must watch. Uh, I am going to summarize for you guys my reaction. I've now listened to the interview a couple of times. Offer does a great job of providing some historical context uh, for those of you who don't know Aduro Clean Technology and their story for 14 years in the making here and reporting out on it in 2024 is uh, quite frankly my honor uh, to pay forward this story that has been evolving over that same time period but more importantly to look to the future and what 2024 and beyond is going to hold for Aduro. Uh, they were um, provided some fantastic color around what is going to be some realistic expectation in way of goals. Uh, Aduro has a sterling track record of um, not only placing those goals out there uh, for, for share owners in the company, but also achieving those goals. Um, they are a team of merit. They are a team of, of deliberate uh, evolution in this company, and they do what they say. It is a, an impressive company to cover. Uh, I have just recently added uh, another share block. I, I know in 2024 and moving out of December of, of last year and into this year, I know the stock has taken a small digression back. Uh, I'm not concerned at all. Uh, it was an opportunity for me to pick up some more shares. Before, before we get into the highlights of the interview that Ofer provided, um, I, I'd like to uh, bring your attention to the description below. Uh, I will provide all of the disclaimers and descriptions um, about my interaction and my uh, involvement with Aduro. Uh, I am providing this content for uh, awareness purposes. Uh, I am a paid um, a contractor with Aduro. Uh, I provide this information uh, also as a share owner in the company. Um, my share uh, thesis over the company as an investor for been going on 16 months now, has never moved away from a bullish posture. And I provide the buy dates, uh, the cost basis, uh, as well as the total share count for any would-be patrons that are catching this message. So um, in full transparency, you guys understand where I'm coming from. Um, the idea here is not to be misconstrued that because I own shares, you need to own shares as well. Um, it only is a call for you to do your own due diligence and review the information that we put right out there for would-be investors who may not have even known that the Aduro Clean Technology story even existed. And we put this right to you, right in front of your face, um, with the power of technology now. So let's get right into it. I talked about the 14-year evolution of the company. This company really, uh, Ofer talked about kind of surprising the market a little bit. And I think there is uh, some continued discovery going on with this company. Uh, I contend that they are, as we speak, unknown. Um, their current market cap has just dipped again below the 70 million mark. And I think from a perspective of looking at a company and what they bring to the table, uh, I think any uh, fair school of thought with what they've got going on would deem this company currently undervalued uh, and significantly so. Uh, they talked about the uh, patent portfolio, which I thought was interesting, and gave some historical uh, context uh, around the plastic recycling uh, in and of itself being a, a rather old idea. Uh, companies have been attempting this and, and failing at uh, the, um, the plastic problem and, and addressing it head on. Uh, historically for many, many years, but uh, what separates Aduro, and he said it a couple times in the interview to suggest that Aduro does in fact have the best technology. In my research, I cannot dispute that. Uh, Aduro certainly needs to continue along its, um, its uh, testing and evaluation uh, with customers uh, as part of their customer engagement program, uh, and then looking into moving into the collaborator stage. And when that happens, 
um, it's going to be game on and it's going to be great to report out on that. But we'll have to just um, continue to monitor the program and and their uh, opportunity through their customer engagement program in 2024 and beyond. We're talking about a $200 billion total addressable market across their three verticals. I typically spend about 90% of my time, if not more, focused on the plastic recycling piece. Um, Ofer kind of doubled down and, and said that is really the, the area of focus right now. Um, even looking to add to their patent portfolio, uh, eight owned, uh, excuse me, seven that are currently issued and one currently pending in their portfolio. But one of their strategic goals in 2024 is to continue to add to that intellectual uh, property uh, catalog that they have with the company. And I think that's going to be exciting. But, uh, you know, the focus in the addressable market here uh, and the pressure of the larger companies and the mandates that are coming these companies are hungry, and these are some of the largest companies in the world that are currently looking and evaluating uh, those solutions that are out there on the market and attempting to um, evaluate and, and eventually choose the correct one that's going to help us move past these glaring statistics that I'll talk about with how we are really failing in this battle in tackling the plastic problem. Um he talked a lot about contaminated material, and, and I found this to be very interesting. He talked about it from the perspective, and I've been covering Aduro for quite some time. I covered it just right before they got selected for the Shell Game Changer program. Ofer briefly mentioned it uh, in true Ofer style uh, in that we do not want to talk about that because that is in an ongoing uh, process uh, and is now 15 months uh, removed of being selected to the program. Uh, and we want to respect that. But to talk generally more about Aduro's place in competing for feedstock and specifically contaminated feedstock puts them in a, a realm uh, all by themselves to be able to tackle that hard to recycle plastic and go after that feedstock that potentially other entities could not touch. And, and that twofold allows Aduro to enter into a blue ocean, no pun intended, of contaminated material that Aduro has the technology to uh, boast being able to not only tackle, but to be able to recycle uh, and execute on high yield on the back end but also set them apart from having to compete uh, for that cleaner feedstock, the stuff that has to go through uh, pre-cleansing and uh, pre-wash types of uh, processes to, to make sure that they are even eligible to be introduced to some of the existing technology on the market now. And I found that to be an extremely important differentiator when evaluating what a Duro brings to the table. Now, as the story evolves, I, I would expect that as more of the technology evaluation customers come into the pipeline and we end up actually making more collaborators with Aduro, the second that the one collaborator signs, I expect that that to be the very domino that's going to start this uh, acceleration uh, in not only the company, but as well as swell the stock price as well, because Aduro trades like an undiscovered company. The volumes do not speak of a company that most of the bulls and long share owners in the company see with regard to the value that exists currently below the surface. And as myself and many others understand about value investing, a lot of people struggle with seeing below the surface. And Aduro currently right now has most of their value below the surface. My friends, over the coming years, that is going to slowly change. And it's going to change in a way that is going to put Aduro into the forefront and, and have them emerge from the shadows and be able to really showcase what we know now to be true about the company but we're kind of screaming at the top of our lungs trying to get people's attention. Uh, and, and right now we are currently in that in the shadows phase, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, so the contaminated plastic, a big, big um, opportunity there. Uh, of course, Aduro uh, sports the lower temperature 
uh, uh, compared to the peers who operate significantly above uh, 400 degrees. Uh, and then also with the high yield, with the application of their chemistry uh, over that contaminated plastic that they're going after, can really sport a fantastic return on economic value for those companies um, that are deploying the AduroClean Technologies uh, platform. Um, with the modularity o Ofer talked about, you know, he talked about not being stuck to building out huge infrastructure. And I do follow Pure Cycle and the story there because these guys are going down a track of building multi-billion dollar infrastructure to produce a, a product and tackle this problem. And as important as that is, Adura wants to be very, very clear in that they're um, approaching this from the perspective of going after their licensing model, first and foremost, just speaks about their evolution um, on on seeking their their revenues into the future as really being focused on collaborating with industry as opposed to build it now and they will come later. Ofer has spoke about this many, many times over. And the modularity piece just speaks to how wide of a swath Adoro has defined for themselves in being able to take their modular opportunity to some of the smaller outfits out there and actually work with these companies to actually tailor the chemistry to an appropriate solution, no matter what size the facility is. He talked about this uh, at length about some of the smaller facilities needing this chemistry and needing these solutions just like the big boys, but not having the opportunity to look to collaborate with or having to uh, opt for recycling facilities that may not be conveniently located uh, as close to these facilities as what they may need. And I think that really sets Aduro apart. And Ofer has talked about this throughout the history of um, the Aduro story and, and has openly conveyed this. He spoke specifically about Mexico and the opportunity for modularity there to take the chemistry and really offer those uh, solutions on a case-by-case -case basis. And I, I think as the story unfolds, my friends, over the coming years, I think this is going to be heir apparent. Uh, in what sets Aduro apart in their ability to really take a solution to their customers. Why? Because in the words of Eric Appleman, their goal is to give the customers what they want and, and not look to build something and look to sell the customers on something that may not fit. Uh, Aduro is really good at meeting the customer needs, and I think they're on the right path to do that. It'll be great to continue to monitor uh, going forward. I talked about the regulated nature of, of competing for that top-end feedstock. This is something that has kind of evolved in the discussion as of late, and it's something as a bullish and long-term share owner in the company, um, I, I certainly gravitate to in looking to differentiate my company, Aduro Clean Technologies, from the competition out there. And there is going to be competition, my friends. The addressable market and the magnitude of the problem is too large. Uh, it's been said that you could take 100 Aduros and we would never solve this problem. My friends, there are only one. And even with that, there are going to be different solutions that evolve. There are going to be solutions that, yes, do require high input. And the companies will have to make those decisions based on their own individual needs. And I do see a Duro playing a large part in tackling the, the magnitude of this problem uh, with the companies that, that they uh, eventually collaborate with and eventually go into commercialization with. But I found that to be an interesting piece for me as a differentiator between the competition out there and what Aduro brings in their ability to compete um, uh, really with the contaminated market and being able to deploy their chemistry and successfully uh, uh, introduce that to their technology and get such high results on the back end with deploying it on the contaminated plastic. Um, the growing list is exhausting uh, and will work to grow daily. This this is something interesting that Ofer talked about. 
I look at 2024 as a continued bridging year for Aduro, but I think with the build out of the team and I think with their current structure, their their build out is is poised to add magnitude. The question was asked by the interviewee uh, if they are prepared to accept this this build out and this grow out and and you know I think right now at a, at a Duro I think we're going to see an evolution of the company really transform because as a small company right now with what we're talking about in total addressable market and potential going forward we're probably talking about a different Aduro clean technology in five years than the one we are evaluating now. And and my friends, just shy of a dollar US, you can pick up this potential magnitude over the coming years, okay? Now, some small insights as a share owner that I want to convey to you is this. If you invest in the company now uh, under a dollar, you probably stand a pretty good opportunity of entering into what I consider to be a very, very de-risked asset even now and make money going forward, okay? I think where the misconception is going to be, and I was really, the, the cream of the crop or the cherry on top on this interview was when Ofer Reich has talked about share owners and owning the company long. I thought that was really, really smart in understanding that what he is trying to convey is not only the value that exists now in Aduro, but also the value that they are looking to add. And something that drives them day to day is adding that value in the company and for eventual share owners in the company going forward. It drives what they do. The reason I mention that is because here at sub $1, I think is immaterial at this point. I think if you tripped and fell into the stock now and you sold at a hundred and a half, I would congratulate you on making some money, but quickly remind you that by selling out, I think that this company's best days are in front of us. Remember guys, we are going on 15 years of, of evolution with this company. We are just now starting on what Ofer defined for you guys just on the um, 2023 recap with the panel discussion last fall, moving into the holiday season about what that structure will look like. The technology evaluation stage, which is what we have now with the 20 dossiers working with large oil. And there's been some leaks on who those oil companies are. Uh, I refrain from that discussion. All I need to know is that there are uh, evaluators in this process now. And indeed there are. And Ofer talked about it on a couple of different times. If you pick up on it, great. What I picked up on is that they are adding new interest daily. They're adding new interest daily. Now, how is that not um, an opportunity to sit back and deem this company a, a bullish thesis and an evolving, exciting company right before our eyes. Um, you'll have to make your own independent decisions about you know, what these things mean. Perhaps maybe you have a different twist on it as me, but that's why you tune into the weekly update to get my insights and reaction from what I feel like a company that's doing everything right is 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 putting right out there via press releases and and for us to pay that forward to somebody who may not feel like they have access or may not be plumbed into the right channels. My friend, absolutely, I'm plumbed into the right channels and I provide those to you as quickly as I can. Um, so just know that if you're subscribed to the channel, you're also subscribed and plumbed right into that conduit for information. And it's very, very exciting. We are primed for 2024, as uh, Ofer alluded to, as being one of those years where we could potentially take some of those evaluators, which is part of their strategic vision for 2024, <clears throat> and create some collaborators out of that. Their goal is two. Um, one will be good enough for me. One, again, starts on that process of really entering into more of a, a binding agreement with these uh, customers uh, to, to, to up the ante. And, and go from, hey, we've already evaluated this. Now let's look at how we can strategically fit this into your business and, and call you a collaborator with the Aduro Clean Technologies uh, application. And I think that's going to be exciting. 
Now, the cherry on the top is going to be the commercialization phase, okay? And I think we're a, a little bit removed of that, and I think we're slightly, if not in its entirety, pretty premature uh, of talking about that. But I, I want to encourage you guys to think about this. The time to get into the company is right now, as we speak. The time to get into the company is when I invested in the company uh, 16 months ago. Okay, this is the calm before the storm. We are in it now. Okay, don't think for a second that you're going to be able to wait and slow play this thing and inject your opportunity right before everything starts to skyrocket. If nothing else, uh, late last year, Aduro pro proved to share owners how quickly the company can move because there is so much fundamental value here. And the Aduro Clean Technologies shares, at least on the US markets where I'm domiciled, ACTHF, those shares are a premium. Okay. I've got my broker barking up my tree to actually take my shares, lend them out, and pay me 18% annualized to lend out my shares. Now, I'm not doing that, but it's the only shares that my broker directly, Fidelity, has reached out to me and said, hey, Ryan, we're willing to pay you to loan out your Aduro shares. That's how high in high demand these shares are, which only gives me an insight to know that I'm in the right place, quite frankly. And if you want to know where that place is in detail, again, I invite you to the description to review my current share position just upped within the last week. Um, to the tune of a small 3,000 uh, share position, I uh, entered into it when it digressed back to 94 cents. Um, I'm up in that position already uh, as I'm up in the remainder of all of my share blocks that I uh, disclosed to you. Why? Um, not because I'm lucky, not because I picked the right time, uh, only because I picked the right company that as I speak and report out on, is absolutely doing the right stuff, okay? So that path to commercialization is actually addressed. Eric Appleman walked through that deliberation. If you haven't caught that panel discussion, there are multiple areas in my featured channels uh, with Penny Queen, with Mariusz Skonochny, uh, who have shared that. I was on the panel, catch that information because my friends, the calm before the storm is only going to last so long. And eventually, we are going to be reporting out on a different company. And reporting out on it, you're going to get the same deliberation as me when we're moving Mach 10. Right now, we're creeping down the freeway going about 11 miles an hour, okay? But when this thing starts to move, don't expect me to apologize to you for not allowing you the opportunity to look at this opportunity when, when nobody else is looking at it. And that is the very time you want to be looking at this. And quite frankly, when we're moving at Mach 10, the, the very fundamentals is what is going to carry this company to where we eventually think that it is going to go, okay? It's not going to be one of those companies that are driving high share prices out of hype because we'll always have to come back to evaluating the company and the fundamentals and making sure that those fundamentals justify or at least are somewhat related to the stock action and the price. We just so happen to have right now a current disconnect between the fundamentals of the company and a recessed stock price. It's an undiscovered stock price as we speak. All right. Over, and I'll close out my remarks on the nuggets of de-risking the process. And de-risking the process is going to come through continued uh, customer engagement and eventually taking on some of the collaborators. Um, he talked about the um, um, addition to the patent uh, portfolio uh, as a 2024 goal. But I just want to add this a little bit. When he talked about the pedigree of the Aduro share owners being long-term I really found that to be very, very exciting. And he had a statistic that around 35% of current share owners are adding to their current position, which he, with each capital raise that they do, there has been no dilution in the company. Um, there has been a renewed efforts by the top guy in the company uh, to add more shares. Uh, and you can look at that however you want to. I choose to look at it with my educated lens with 
over 20 years of market experience, when the top guy is adding shares, um, there's usually only one reason for that. Okay. Um, there's a thousand different reasons to sell a stock, but there's only one reason to buy the stock. And as we speak, right under our noses, the top guy is adding more uh, shares to his position. Why? Because he believes that what they're doing is right. And he believes that there's uh, an opportunity here to, for Adura to do something special. Uh, I'm in that camp as a bullish long-term share owner. Um, I, over the last 16 months, I have done nothing but accumulate. And I'm happy to report to you guys that uh, I have sold all of zero shares over that time frame. And that's how it will continue to shape. I just do want to mention in the last final couple of minutes here that Aduro has employed Crystal Technologies, uh, Crystal Research uh, out of New York City, which is actually very, very exciting. I look at it like a share owner to be um, piped into a conduit to information. And this is a tell it story. Uh, go tell it on the mountain because people need to understand this company. They need to be given the opportunity to take a first look at the company. And uh, very rarely are people ever provided this opportunity to look at a company like this uh, so, so close to the ground floor with so much de-risking that has already happened, being so far advanced in the Game Changer program. Uh, that I think Crystal uh, Research is going to be a fantastic addition to what Aduro is trying to do, and that is scream at the top of their lungs and and get people to to deliberately and carefully take a look at this opportunity. Um, this is only a, a, an invitation. Um, I provide this opportunity through the Independent Investor Channel to convey the developments with the company, quite simple, but my reach is only my reach. Uh, and to expand upon that reach, I think, is a very, very smart move by Aduro. The press release, uh, I will also link in the description to the um, edition uh, of Crystal Research. I will also provide that in the comment section for easy access for you guys. And you need to review that information. And in closing, the nuggets and the perspective over the Ofer Vikas interview that just um, came through this week, uh, I highly encourage you as a share owner in the company to review that information, uh, to review it with your own lens, to draw your own conclusions from what that could potentially mean and where the top guy has in way of vision and where he sees Aduro going in 2024 and beyond. Guys, if you appreciate the information coming through on the Independent Investor Channel, plug yourself into the pipeline that we enjoy. It's free of charge. Hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. If you like content like this, share the message with anybody out there that's interested in the space. Bring them on to the message. Looking to grow the community of exciting opportunities and talking about it during a time where nobody else is talking about it. I cannot stress this enough. Because when it starts, my friends, there's nothing I can do to slow it down for you. Right now is your opportunity, and I highly encourage you to take a first look at a Duro Clean technology. Guys, take, thank you so much for tuning in for the entire video, and good luck in your investment future.